as you can tell by the title of this video, I bought a van! Disclaimer, if you did not see my Instagram posts already, my hard drive recently crashed and I lost about 10% of the beginning part of this van build series, including this video that I'm reshooting right now. So in my next week's video, there might be a little bit of weird continuity errors or me trying to explain some stuff that I've done without having video footage to back it up. I really don't wanna wait and get my hard drive fixed and then post this a month from now. So I'm just gonna try to get the ball rolling and it might be a little bit weird, but please bear with me. It's going to be more continuous, more put together after that video. So back in December when I was at home in Virginia with my family, I had brought up to my parents that I was really considering seriously looking at and buying a van and so I started my process of looking for a van there because that was going to be a more affordable option for me. In California I had been looking online and I really couldn't find anything to the specs I wanted that wasn't already built out. The van I ended up buying was a 136 inch wheelbase Ram ProMaster with the high roof. The reason I wanted to buy that one is because I wanted something that was tall enough for me to stand in but compact enough to get around and be able to be in cities and not feel like I was hauling an RV around essentially. I chose the Ram ProMaster over a Ford or Mercedes Sprinter because I couldn't afford any of those other options. Right now, the used car market is kind of insane. Everything is extremely expensive. And I ended up buying this car from a dealer for about $28,000 before tax. After tax, with getting it registered in California and everything, it cost me almost $38,000, which might sound insane, but the sales tax in California is crazy. And if you can avoid getting your car registered in California, I definitely recommend not doing it here. I didn't really have the option because that's where my permanent address was. And I could have gotten it registered at my Virginia address, but I didn't want to have to drive it back there to do emissions, blah, 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 blah. One of the big things about buying this van was I wanted it to be really easy to get it registered, smogged, all that stuff. And since this vehicle is a 2017, I figured that it was gonna pass smog pretty easily, right? Wrong. And the only reason is because the car had some issues with it when I first bought it had check engine light on and tire pressure sensor and all this stuff. And the dealer that I bought the car from was honestly terrible. Like I had a, such a horrible experience dealing with the dealership and not dealership. It was a private dealer that I went through um, or a third party dealer. I don't know what the word for that is. It just ended up being kind of a nightmare. And so I recommend that if you're thinking about making a large investment, go to a lot of dealers and find something that is going to really click with you. I felt so much pressure initially to buy this van from the person who was trying to sell it to me that I left the premises the first day. I, I was getting so stressed out and then she had her boss come and try to like swoon me and everything and I was just like, no, I'm going home, I'm gonna go bowling with my family and I'm gonna think about it and come back later. And I ended up wanting to buy it because to be honest, like I feel like my options were few and this was a pretty good deal for the current market but it did not come without a lot of headaches. Anyway, I ended up going through with this dealer because I was able to pay for it and get it registered in California while I was in Virginia, which was something I was really wanting to do. I didn't wanna to have to go to the DMV and wait and change the registration from Virginia to California. So I just ended up doing it for the ease, but it ended up being kind of hard. So if you're thinking about buying a van or anything like that, my experience was very stressful and I think it had a lot to do with the fact that it was my first big time purchase investment and everything and I was gonna be stressed no matter what. With that being said, I obviously did not pay for this car completely in cash. I ended up getting my credit score checked. I had a great credit score, which is between 700 and 760 at the time when I bought it. And the APR that I ended up getting on this van, I think is somewhere between 3.4 and 3.5%. I put a $15,000 down payment on it. And that was the reason why like, it took me so long to buy this van because if you know me personally, you know that I have been wanting to get a van probably since I graduated from high school, which is about 10 years ago now. And saving up money working in conservation is extremely challenging. Like I make around $30,000 a year working, which is 
basically poverty level employment and a lot of conservation jobs that's how much they pay and so it's extremely difficult to save up money to have a savings and a safety net and then also save money for things that you want to buy in the future and I honestly I could not have done this without my parents because I ended up saving up enough money where they told me they would match however much money I had saved and I had saved around uh, $8,000 over the course of about five years, which is <laughs> kind of sad. But when the time came, my, my parents actually ended up gifting me that down payment and I, I really could not have done this without them. So mom and dad, thank you so much. Like I'm eternally grateful for being able to live in a privileged family where I have parents who care about me, support me and have the financial means to do so when it comes to something that like I'm really dedicated to. And, you know, I know that not everyone has that opportunity um, and that ability or that relationship with their parents. It's just really difficult. If you don't have that and you want to save up money at a time like this, like people my age don't have the options to save the money that they want to do working most jobs because a lot of jobs don't pay the living wage that we need. It doesn't matter what job you're working. You should be able to make enough money to pay your rent, buy the stuff you need, save for what you want, and have a safety net. Like our parents in the 70s and 80s, they were able to do that. They were able to go to school and have a part-time job and save money. And we don't even have the availability to do that right now. And one of the reasons I bought this van is because working, first off, working in conservation, you do move around a lot. So it's great to have your car be your house. But also like rent is insanely expensive and I can't afford to pay rent in California while working a job in conservation. So it's kind of like a response to poverty, but I also wouldn't have been able to do it without my parents' help. So like I am still privileged in that sense and I recognize that. And I really wanna just like express gratitude to that because I know that I I have an opportunity in my life right now that not a lot of people get and people probably want and this is like my response to try and get housing security after the last year or so of my life like being evacuated and all that stuff has been so incredibly stressful and so this is going to be a point of like freedom for me and I'm really really excited about that anyway I feel like that was a long digression <laughs> um <laughs> So yeah, if you're like buying from a dealer or whatever, do not get stressed out by them. Honestly, like you're in control of that purchase. They're trying to make you buy something because they want a commission. And if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. I think this van was meant to be despite all of the issues I had, not just excluding buying it, but also driving it back out to California. Uh, yeah, since I lost some of my clips, these are the only clips that I have from that trip. I've been stuck in traffic in Tennessee for over an hour. I haven't moved in over an hour. My car is about to run out of gas. And there's like a huge accident and it's snowing and I just feel like I'm gonna have a mental breakdown. God, I'm really trying to stay positive through all this, but I am so, I am so stressed out. I like. I'm unbelievably stressed out about this whole situation and just feeling like I'm, everything is going wrong and feeling like I made the wrong decision buying this van and just having so many mental issues right now and I know that my words aren't formulating very well because I'm so anxious but I'm just trying to remember that like you know, it's it's all gonna be okay in the end, and it's gonna work out. I know it's gonna work out. <laughs> I ended up getting caught in a crazy snowstorm in Tennessee, and my check engine light had come back on, my coolant temperature had dropped, and my car was like starting to accelerate drive super weird. And then on top of that, while I was stuck on the highway, a semi truck flipped over and I was on E. I had like 40 miles left in my tank and I could just see the range going down and down and down. 
and the check engine light being on and my car just like not working correctly and I like had a mental breakdown on the second day of driving back across the country. It was not ideal and it made me like really doubt if I was doing the right thing. One thing I will say since that was like a couple of months ago and it's currently the beginning of March is that I haven't gotten stressed since that because that has been that was such a huge point of stress for me. And so like all of the projects that I've done up until this point have just been pretty smooth sailing because I was like, if I can endure that coming back out here, I can endure anything. And so I will express gratitude to that very stressful event as well now that I have had enough time to separate me from it. I'm also on the side of the highway right now since I had to refilm all this stuff. It's just like, I'm currently traveling because I moved out of my house, which will be in another video. I don't wanna to digress too much further from that, but it's just been kind of a crazy week or so because I have to reshoot a few of these things and it's all good. But, you know, I really wanted to get this started because I am so excited to do a van build series and show all of you at home what I'm gonna be doing because I bought this van like completely gutted and there was nothing in it and so I'm like doing a full build. It's gonna have solar, it's gonna have a water tank, it's gonna have a water heater and a pump, it's gonna have a shower, it's gonna have a toilet, a bed, all this stuff. And so I'm really excited to bring all of you along on the journey with me. The first video that I'm going to end up doing is going to be on rust prevention because one of the things that I was really prioritizing in this van build is having a really good foundation. I bought the vehicle a 2017 because I wanted to have something that had the least amount of rust possible and something that was newer that I knew that was you know structurally stable and everything because buying an older van would have been great especially like a Dodge Sprinter or something but I get so worried about people poorly taking care of their vehicles and stuff and if this is going to be my house I want the foundation to be good so the first video that's going to come out after this is going to be on rust prevention and basically building from the bottom up um, doing everything on my own and just taking y'all along on the journey and seeing you know what I do well what I mess up and so far the projects I've done I've been really really proud of myself and so I'm excited to get the ball rolling on this because it's been I started working on it when I got back out here which was at the beginning of January and it's March now so I have like two months worth of content that I'm trying to catch up on and get out to y'all and I have just been extremely busy and haven't had time to edit so I I'm trying to prioritize that now. And with the hard drive stuff, I was just, I was getting the ball rolling on that and then my hard drive broke. And I was just like, are you kidding me? Oh my gosh, but I will not let it get me down. So if you've made it to the end of this insanely long rant, thank you very much. I am so excited for the next chapter of my life, learning how to, you know, plumb, do electrical, build things, design things, and just like really make this exactly how I envision it and I hope that you all want to join me too because it's gonna be sweet and then after that we're gonna go on adventures and travel and do all sorts of stuff and I hopefully will get some work content in there this summer there's another video I'm gonna be doing after this that explains what's going on this summer because everything is going to be very very different I am going to be, as a spoiler, I'm moving out of California. So stay tuned for that in a later video. Please give this video a like if you liked it and leave me a comment, words of encouragement. I am so stoked to show y'all the progress that I've made on it so far and what's going on in my life because 2022 is gonna be a big year for me. And you know, I said that in 2021 and then things worked out super crazy and not expected and it was really hard, but I have a really good feeling about this year, so. Let's do it. Let's get crazy, have a great time, and I hope that y'all are having a super awesome day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.